Magandang araw. Ang topic natin ngayon ay polynomials. So, pag sinabi natin polynomial, that is actually an algebraic expression of this form. a sub n, x raised to n, plus a sub n minus 1, x raised to n minus 1, and so on and so forth, up to a sub 2x squared, plus a sub 1x, plus a sub 0. Now, Itong mga a sub n's dito, we have a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub n minus 2, up to a sub 2, a sub 1, a sub 0. Ang tawag natin doon ay coefficients, numerical coefficients. And of, and of course, the variable normally denoted as x, x raised to n, x raised to n minus 1, x raised to n minus 2, and so on. Now, let us identify the the parts of the polynomial expression. First, we have a sub n. a sub n cannot be 0. It can be any real number. It can be fraction. It can be decimal. It can be positive or negative, but never 0. Why? Let's find out later on. Let us have n. Look at n. n, n minus 1, the exponents, n minus 2, and so on. Now, lahat ng yan ay exponents. In order for an expression to be a polynomial, the, the exponents of the variables should be whole numbers. Take note, whole numbers. Hindi pwedeng, hindi pwedeng fraction, hindi pwedeng, let's say, decimals, hindi pwedeng radicals, yung exponent. It should be whole numbers. Hindi pwedeng negative. Hmm? Next. Um... Itong coefficients, the numerical coefficients, a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub n minus 2, and so on, should be real numbers. Real numbers. Any real numbers. Padding fractions, padding decimals. And x, the variable x, should be any real number. So and the value of x can be any real number. Anong ibig sabihin? Pag may value ng e, pag may certain value or certain real number na hindi pwedeng, maging value for x, then we say that the expression is not a polynomial. Notice the exponents, n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on. The highest value or the highest exponent is n. The highest exponent is n. Thus, ang tawag natin doon ay degree of the polynomial. If the highest exponent is 4, then the polynomial is of 4th degree. If the highest exponent is 3, then the polynomial is of 3rd degree. If the highest exponent is 2, then it's second degree. If the highest exponent is 1, then it's first degree. If the highest exponent is 0. Remember, 0 is also a whole number. So, in that case, 0 yung degree ng polynomial. Now, doon tayo sa a sub n x raised to n. If you're going to, to analyze, the polynomial is arranged from highest exponent n to lowest exponent. No. So, ito ay x raised to 1. Siyempre, ito dahil wala siyang x. That means, the exponent of x here is 0. So, since the expression is arranged from the highest exponent to the lowest exponent, then we say that the polynomial is in standard form. Take note. Standard form. Now, if the polynomial is written in standard form, then the first term the term with the highest exponent is called the leading term. The leading term. Now, yung coefficient niya na a sub n, ang tawag natin doon ay leading coefficient. Ulitin ko ha. The whole term is the leading term, whereas the coefficient of the leading term is called the leading coefficient. Now, the exponent of x or the exponent of the variable in the leading term is the degree of the polynomial. If we're going to look at the polynomial again, there is a term with no variable. Look at the last term, a sub 0. So, wala siyang variable. Then, we call this the constant term. The constant term. So, para madaling tandaan, let us denote the leading term as LT, the leading coefficient as LC, and the constant term as CT. Now, for the first activity, let us try to identify whether a given expression is a polynomial or not. Now, to simplify, based on the definition, to, simpli to simplify, 
or for easier and uh, identification whether an algebraic expression is polynomial or not then we have to remember the following first the exponent of the variables are whole numbers so when we say whole numbers it could be 0 1 2 3 4 5 and so on second there is no variable in the denominator third there is no variable in the radical sign fourth there is no variable inside the absolute value symbol and fifth there is no variable in the exponent so these are the things that we have to remember so that will be easily identify whether a polynomial rather whether an algebraic expression is polynomial or not so let us see if the following expressions are polynomial so in number one we have 5x squared plus 3x minus 1 so is there a variable in the denominator so there is no is there a variable inside the radical sign there is none is there a variable inside the absolute value symbol there is none is there a variable in the exponent so there is none are all the exponents whole numbers so the exponent of the the first term is 2 the second term is 1 this is a constant term so in this case since all the conditions are met then we say that that expression is a polynomial next let us have the second expression as you can see in this expression there is a negative exponent so it violates one of the conditions so in this case remember that negative 2 is not a whole number exponent should be whole number since negative 2 is not a whole number then this is not a polynomial let us solve number 3 look at the conditions there should be no variable in the denominator since there are variables in the denominator then number 3 is not a polynomial let us have the fourth one the fourth one so in this case all the exponents are whole numbers there are no variables in the denominator inside the radical sign inside the absolute value symbol and there are no ex uh, variables in the exponent so this is a polynomial so all the conditions are met okay so let us have the fifth so the fifth is 2x minus 3 all over the denominator 5x plus 11 in this case this is not a polynomial so this is not a polynomial because there is a variable in the denominator number six there is a radical number here the square root of five but as you can see x is outside the radical sign so in this case this is still a polynomial so this is a polynomial let us go to number seven so the expressions is two 2 over 9 x cubed y minus 6 square root of 7 x y. As you can see, in square root of 7, only 7 is inside the radical sign. x and y are outside the radical sign. Look at number 3. The exponent of x is 2, while the exponent of y is 4. Those are whole numbers. Though the exponent of 3 is square root of 2, but hindi nakasama yun. Just look at the variables. So, since the conditions are met, so this is a polynomial. So, though there is a radical in the exponent, that exponent is of the constant term, not exponent of the variable. So, pasok pa rin yun. That's still a polynomial. Let us have number 8. So, as you can see in number 8, may violations ba? na natin. So, raised to 3, raised to 12, raised to 2. Tapos, yung dulo, wala namang variable doon sa dulo. So, in this case, this is a polynomial. Okay, now we are in number 9. As you can see in number 9, there is a variable inside the radical sign, the square root sign. And in the second term, there is an exponent which is not a whole number. One half. One half is not a whole number. So in that case, that is not a polynomial. So madali lang mag-identify if that's polynomial or not. So let us have number 10. So what's your guess for number 10? Is it a polynomial or not? As you can see, the exponent in the second term is x minus 1. So there is a variable in the exponent. So in that case, this is not a polynomial. So okay, now for the next concept, um, we say that a polynomial is in standard form if all the terms are arranged 
in decreasing order of exponents of the variable. So, nasabi ko na yan kanina. Na? So, kapag nasa standard form, dapat naka-arrange ang terms uh, from the term with the highest exponent up to the term with the lowest exponent. Now, let us try to analyze or let us try to identify the different types of polynomials. So, we can classify polynomials according to the number of terms. Number of terms. Pag sinabi nating terms, these are expressions separated by plus or minus. So, pag may nakata kayong plus, minus, so the plus minus signs there separate the terms. Okay, so let us have the first one. We have monomial. So, when we speak of monomial, this is actually a one-term polynomial. Next, uh, for example, we have negative 3x raised to 5, 5x, and 2. So, these are all one-term polynomial or monomials. Let us have the second one, binomial, from the word bi. Bi means 2. So, in this case, this is actually a two-term polynomial. For example, negative 3x raised to 5 plus 5x. As you can see, there is a plus sign between negative 3x raised to 5 and 5x. So, in that case, that plus sign there separates the two terms. So, there are two terms in that expression. And also, 2x minus 1. Next, the third type is trinomial. So, trinomial from the word tri or from the prefix tri, tri means 3. So, that is a three-term polynomial. So, for example, we have negative 3x raised to 5 minus 5x, then plus 2. So, the first term is negative 3x raised to 5, the second term is 5x, and or rather negative 5x, and the third term is positive 2. Let us have the fourth one. We have If we have polynomials with 4, 5, 6, and so on, number of terms, then we call those polynomials multinomial or multinomial. So for example, we have negative 3x raised to 5 as the first term, 5x the second term, 2 as the third term, and negative 1 as the last term. So that polynomial there is a multinomial because there are four terms. Now, we can also classify a polynomial according to the degree. So remember, sabi ko kanina, pag sinabing degree, that is the highest exponent of the variable. The highest exponent of the variable. So how do we classify a polynomial according to degree? So, if a polynomial has no degree, then we call that zero polynomial. Zero polynomial because simply that polynomial is zero. So, in this case, this has no degree. Next, the second one is zero degree polynomial. So, when do we say that a polynomial has zero degree? That is, if the polynomial is constant. If the polynomial is constant, so for example, we have 1. 1 is constant. 2.5 is constant. Negative 15 over 2 is also constant. So in that case, this is a 0 degree polynomial. So 0 degree polynomial. Next, let us have the third type. The third type is of 1 degree. So we call that polynomial linear, linear polynomial. For example, 3x plus 4. So in this expression, 3x plus 4, the highest exponent of the variable, in this case the variable is x, the highest exponent is 1. So we call that polynomial linear. Another example is 3 times the quantity 2x minus 3. So in this expression, we have here the variable x, the exponent of x is still 1. So in this case, this is a linear polynomial. So in this case, this is a 1 degree polynomial. So the degree is 1. Let us have the third type or the fourth type. In this case, if the degree is 2, so if the degree is 2, we call this polynomial quadratic. An example of which is x squared. minus 3x plus 4. So in this expression, the highest exponent is in the first term. Or the highest exponent is at x in the first term. The highest exponent is 2. So we call this expression quadratic. Another example of a quadratic expression is x minus 3. So we have x minus 3 times x plus 2. 
if we are going to multiply the two expressions, x minus 3 times x plus 2, we will get x squared and so on. So re remember that x times x is x squared. If we're going to multiply x here and x here, so that's x squared. So in this case, this is still quadratic. So if an expression is quadratic, then it is of second degree. So the degree is 2 or second degree polynomial or the degree is 2. So let's change this one to fur. And let us have the fourth type of polynomial. So if the degree is 3, we, we call that polynomial cubic. The highest exponent is 3. That is a third degree polynomial. Let's say x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 1. No, or x plus 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 1. That's also cubic. Next, if the degree is 4, we call that we call that quartic. Quartic polynomial. So this is a polynomial of fourth degree, meaning the highest exponent is 4. Of fifth degree, we call that quintic. So that's a quintic polynomial. A quintic polynomial is a polynomial of fifth degree, where the degree is 5. Then and so on if we have a polynomial with exponent raised to 6 or raised to 7 or raised to 8 then we call that nth degree well in general nth degree polynomial so we name the polynomial according to degree so n here represents any number so let's say we have raised to 6 and 6th degree polynomial, raised to 7, 7th degree polynomial, raised to 100, 100 degree polynomial. Now, in that sense, having, or having learned those concepts, let us try to answer activity number 2. Okay, now for activity 2, we are going to rewrite each polynomial in standard form. Tell what kind of polynomial is each. So, according to degree and according to the number of terms, of course, identify the degree, the leading term, the leading coefficient, and the constant term. So, in number 1, we have 3x squared minus 6x raised to 7 plus 1. So, as you can see, the term with the highest exponent is negative 6x plus 7. So, that should come first. So, remember that the sign is included in the term. So, that's the first term. Next, the sec the the next term with higher with higher exponent is 3x squared so that would be the second term since that is positive then we write plus before 3x squared and of course the last term is 1 so we write plus 1 at the end so as you can see the polynomial has three terms then we say that the polynomial is trinomial now let us identify the degree the highest exponent is 7 so, we say that that is a 7th degree polynomial. So, that is a 7th degree polynomial. Now, since the degree is 7, and that is with the term negative 6x raised to 7, then we say that the leading term is negative 6x raised to 7. So, the whole term, that's the leading term. Now, the coefficient of the leading term is negative 6 then we say that negative 6 is the leading coefficient. So, as you can see, the coefficient of the leading term, that is the leading coefficient. And the term with no variable is 1. So, we call that the constant term. So, the constant term is 1. Napakadali lang po. Na? So, let us try number 2. So, look at number 2. That's negative x raised to 5 plus 8x. So, Rewriting it in standard form, then we have negative x raised to 5 plus 8x. So nothing changes because the polynomial is already arranged in standard form. Now, let us have the type of polynomial according to terms. We have two terms, so we call that binomial. So the polynomial is binomial. The degree, as you can see, the highest exponent is 5. So the polynomial is of 5th degree. So the degree is 5. So that is a 5th degree polynomial, a quintic polynomial in that sense. 
Next. Now, since the exponent is 5, and that is with the term negative x raised to 5, so we say that the leading term is negative x raised to 5. And since the coefficient of that leading term is negative 1, negative 1, so the leading coefficient then, the leading coefficient then is negative 1. So remember, if if the term is negative, then we have to include the negative sign in the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient is negative 1. And we have the constant term. So as you can see, there is no constant term in the expression, or rather, no term, or rather, since the two terms have x, then we say that the constant term is 0. So if all the terms in the polynomial has a variable x, then we say that the constant term is 0. Now, we still have three remaining activities. So, we have number three, number four, and number five. I'd like you to answer three and four. Three and four. Now, let us go to number five. So, as you can see, number five, the expression is not written in expanded form. It's written as factored form. So, what you can do is to multiply the two terms in order to rewrite it into standard form. So let's try to multiply. So we have 2x times 3x squared. Then we have 2x times negative 1. So that would be plus 2x times negative 1. Then we have positive 3 times 3x squared. So that would be plus 3 times 3x squared. And lastly, we have positive 3 times negative 1. So we have plus 3 times negative 1. So let us try to simplify the polynomial. So 2x squared times 3x squared is 6x cubed. Then positive 2x times negative 1 would be negative 2x. Then positive 3 times positive 3x squared would be positive 9x squared. And positive 3 times negative 1 would be negative 3. Now, rearranging the expression, so we have the leading term would be, so in standard form, rearranging this in standard form, so the leading term would have exponent 3. So that would be 6x cubed, followed by positive 9x squared or plus 9x squared, followed by minus 2x, and followed by minus 3. So that's the standard form of the expression. Now, let us, since this has four terms, then the polynomial is a multinomial. So remember, if we have four or more terms, then we, we call that a multinomial polynomial. So as you can see, the polynomial is of degree 3. So the degree is 3. So we say that the polynomial is cubic, a cubic polynomial. Now, the leading term is 6x cubed. The coefficient of 6x cubed, of course, is 6. So the constant term, rather, the leading coefficient is 6. As you can see, we have a term with no variable that's negative 3. So the constant term is negative 3. Okay, so that's it.